you messed it up. You're stupid. Well, speaking of whiny, ungrateful women that love to pretend that they're victims, today's Daily Dose of Stupid is about Ilhan Omar. So, they put out a video of Ilhan Omar. She's speaking at this conference, and I'll tell you a little bit of, of background in that because it, it makes it more impactful. But she's speaking at this conference, and now this, put together a video of her answering a biased question. That's how they fra phrase it. And I'm going to show the whole thing. It's a little bit long. It's about three minutes. So for a, uh, a, a news clip, that's really long. But watch the whole thing. I promise it's worth it. And I want to give Ilhan Omar every opportunity. I want to give her as much grace to be understood in the context in which it was presented. And you'll notice that now this does do a little bit of editing. But it's important to note in this that now this, they have a habit and have for a very long time of basically putting together pro-Democrat, pro-left propaganda pieces and trying to put them in a format in such a way that it makes you think that it's, or it, it looks like it's sheerly informative and the style, stylistically, it kind of looks like a video that somebody would post about, you know, cute baby goats playing with each other or whatever, which I'm not saying that they shouldn't do that. From a business perspective, it's smart. Because instead of doing the, you know, the big desk with the, uh, the coffee mugs with the different network logos on them, instead of doing that, they give you just little sound bites of Democrats saying things that they think are good and make Democrats look good. But, but essentially, the important thing to note here is they're very much in the pocket of the DNC. They're very much in the pocket of the American left. They try to sort of put these videos together to make it seem like they're trying to be objective and they're just... Uh, human interest stories, but they're really not. And in this one, they're really not even trying to hide that fact. So, uh, you know, props to them for trying to get more viewers. But if you watch this video and you understand the context in which it takes place, it puts it in a whole different light. So go ahead, take a look at this. This is Ilhan Omar. be able to make a statement against FGM because that's an issue um, in Detroit. It would be really powerful if the two Muslim congresswomen, yourself and Rashida, would make a statement on this issue. Thanks. Your second question is an appalling question because I, I always feel like there are bills that we vote on, um, bills we sponsor. Um, many statements we put out and then we're in um, in a panel like this and the question is posed could you and Rashida do this and it's like how often should I make a schedule like does this need to be on repeat every five minutes should I be like so today I forgot to condemn Al-Qaeda uh, so here's the Al-Qaeda one. Today, I forgot to condemn FGM, so here it goes. Today, I forgot to condemn Hamas, so here it goes. Today, I forgot, you know, I mean, I, I, it is um, a very frustrating question. It comes up. You can look at my record. I voted for bills um, doing exactly what you're uh, asking me to do. I have put out statements upon statements. There's a bill in, in Congress. There's a resolution that I am the co-author of that I voted out of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And so I am, I think, quite disgusted, really, to be honest, that as Muslim legislators, we are constantly being asked to waste our time uh, speaking to um, issues that other people are not asked to speak to because the assumption exists is that we somehow support and are for, right? No, the, there is an assumption. So I want to make sure that the next time someone is in an audience and is looking at me and Rashida and Abdul and Sam, that they ask us the proper questions that they will probably ask any member of Congress or any legislator or any politician and would not come with an accusation that we might support something that is so abhorrent, so offensive, so evil, so vile. What we 
we look for and what this whole conversation is about is that not only do we not have internalized fears about what we might believe and how that get, gets implemented, but that we also don't have right, assumptions about what our value basis might be because of where we might come from and who we pray to. And so I would like, not just for you, but for everyone, to know that if you want us to speak as politicians, American politicians, then you treat us as such. Okay, so that's Ilhan Omar. Now, what's important to note about this, because context matters, if you saw that and saw, okay, well, she gets a little upset that she feels like she has to answer this question over and over and over again, you can kind of see, even if you wind up disagreeing with Ilhan Omar, you can kind of see how that would get tiresome or how there's people constantly believing that she would support Muslim policies like female genital mutilation, which he was asked about it, it's essentially female circumcision and it's, it's horrific and it causes all kinds of health problems. Or uh, she would also have issues with, okay, well, I've, people are asking me to denounce terrorism, denounce Al Qaeda, denounce all these other things every five minutes. And so I could see how she would get a little upset about this, but there's an important part of this story that now this conveniently left out. Where was the question taking place? This question was asked of her by a black Muslim woman, and she was doing so at the Muslim Collective for Equitable Democracy group, which is run by a group or sorry, that, that was the name of the conference, which is run by a group called Muslims for Progressive Values. So it's not like, you know, super white Caleb Cockwit went up and asked her, hey, could you denounce female genital mutilation? See, that's what makes this story so different. Because the way that you see it, with all the context stripped away from it, it makes it seem as though some conservative activist was trying to play gotcha with Ilhan Omar. And that's the way that Ilhan Omar took it. But what it ignores is that she was in a room filled with people that are friendly to her cause, that are Muslims themselves, that are liberals themselves. So it's not even like a conservative Muslim. It's somebody that is lockstep with Ilhan Omar politically, probably on pretty much everything. And you'll also notice that if you look at the way she was wording the question, she wasn't trying to present this in such a way that she was trying to catch Ilhan Omar in a moment where she would refuse to condemn F, uh, FGM. She was saying, well, I think that it would be really powerful for you to have an opportunity to make a statement, you and Rashida, that if you guys would just make a statement against it. She was trying to help Il Ilhan Omar. She was saying, there are people that are saying that you're for this. This woman seems to believe that Ilhan Omar would be against female genital mutilation. And so she wants to give her the opportunity to denounce it. He's saying, why don't you right here right now make a powerful statement against it? She is trying to help Ilhan Omar. This isn't somebody that is trying to draw blood. She was trying to paint Ilhan Omar in a better light and believed that she would go ahead and denounce it and then got her head bitten off because of it. And so this is what's really interesting about this. It shows that Ilhan Omar knows how to do exactly one thing, regardless of the audience, regardless of who she's talking to. The only thing Ilhan Omar is good at is playing the victim. That even in a room filled with liberal Muslims, she still tries to make the case that I'm being singled out and I'm being discriminated against because I'm a Muslim woman. 
even when it's other liberal Muslim women that are asking her questions. You see, that's the thing that's so hilarious about this, that normally, even though I don't buy into it, normally the narrative is that if you are somebody like Ilhan Omar, that you're a minority religion, you're a woman, and you're a minority race, that you're constantly being discriminated against because all the people that you run in, in contact with don't understand you, or they're intolerant, they're ignorant, and they are asking you to restate Ilhan and Omar case, that they just assume that you're actually in favor of Al-Qaeda and Hamas and all the other terrorist organizations, and you're in favor of Sharia law and in favor of female genital mutilation. This is a case where the woman asking was about as similar to Ilhan Omar as you could possibly be, and yet she still plays the victim because it's the only thing she knows how to do. The only thing she knows how to do is talk about how victimized she is. And right now, that's hot in the Democrat Party. Because to them, the more victimized you are, the more authentic and the more important your feelings and your political stances are. To them, that's what grants you authority. It's an argument of authority, which is the weakest form of appeal. Out of all the appeals that there are, that's by far the weakest one, an argument of authority. But that's what they're seeking after. They think that... that that's the only thing that matters, that your opinions don't matter on certain issues if you're not in the community that that matters to. So here's the funny thing about that, and, and that's sort of the, the mantra of the left right now. So let me get this straight. When you're talking about issues like this, specifically ones like FGM that targets women and harms women but not men because you can't, despite what the left may tell you about people having other body parts, you don't have a vagina if you're a guy. And so you, you can't go through this just like a woman can't be circumcised. You can't go through this if you're a man. And so this is an issue that specifically targets women. And yet the irony in all of this is that they're saying, well, your opinions only matter on these things if you fit into that community. So in other words, you can only really talk intelligently about FGM if you are a Muslim woman, essentially, that unless you are somebody that belongs to that religion and somebody that belongs to the group that it targets, you're the only person that's allowed to speak on it. And someone actually does that and asks them to make a statement. And her immediate reaction is, well, why, why would you even ask me that? That's discrimination to even ask that question. Okay, well, if we can't get an opinion from anybody that doesn't fit inside the community, and then when you do ask anybody that actually belongs to that community, they bite your head off and say, well, the only reason you're asking that is because of discrimination. Then you can't win with these people. There is no way to get an opinion if everybody outside of that community is excluded and everybody inside that community refuses to, an to answer the question. The only solution to that is you don't get an answer. The only possible outcome is nobody gets to answer the question. And the truth is, I think that's exactly the way the Democrats like it. They don't want to answer questions about this stuff. Because it is rampant in Muslim-controlled parts, like the district that Ilhan Omar is from, where there have been thousands of cases of female genital mutilation. Now, I'm not saying that Ilhan Omar supports it, although she didn't actually condemn it in that particular clip. But I'm just saying that you can understand why at a Muslim conference run by a progressive Muslim group, you have a Muslim woman on the stage talking. You can understand why that venue would be conducive to asking a question like this. For example, even if it were something that had no association with my church whatsoever, and I'm not bashing Catholics, it's just you know, they have more history than, the, than most of the churches in Christianity. If somebody were to stand up on a stage or a conference, if let's say I were doing a panel, basically if I were in the position of Ilhan Omar, and it was at the Christian Conservative Council, which is put on by the Conservative Republicans group or something like that, 
and I'm a well-known minister. I have a Bible class at the end of every show. And someone at that position stands up and says, so what did you think about the Crusades? Do you really think the media would give me a pass and now this would be making a video of me saying, you shouldn't even ask me that question. I am so tired of having to answer for the Crusades, which, by the way, I honestly am. I do it anyway because I think it's the right thing to do. But I say, I'm so, and again, it's not even my church. It's just a group of Christians in a different denomination. But nonetheless, I still think that's an important historical topic to address. But do you really think the media would let me get away with, you shouldn't even be asking me that question. Do I have to every five minutes give my speech about the Crusades? Just go look at it online. Go look at other states. They would tear me up one side and down the other if I did that. And we all know it. We all know it. And so for Ilhan Omar to decry the the answer even, or sorry, the question even being asked, it's so transparently stupid. And it's also important to note because she talks about uh, de denouncing Al-Qaeda, den denouncing Hamas. Let's also remember that at one point Ilhan Omar actually worked for CARE, which was a front group for Hamas. Our own legal system admitted to that. They were an unindicted co-conspirator co because there was a flow of money going back between the two. CARE was actually acting as a fundraiser for an actual terrorist group. So yeah, the fact that there might be some people, even though this woman clearly was not one of them, even though there might be some people that look at not all Muslims, but specifically Ilhan Omar, and say, you know, I'm not real sure that she is 100% against terrorism, especially when she supports uh, organizations like the BDS movement, especially when you consider and, and look back through her history where she trivializes 9-11, or she says that when it comes to Al-Qaeda, people ought to be just as serious and just as, uh, just as fearful of the United States as they are Al-Qaeda, that when you say the word United States, that that should drum up the same kind of emotion that it does when you talk about Al-Qaeda. So yeah, there's a, a reasonable person can look at that and say, I don't know that this woman isn't a terrorist th sympathizer. Now, would that be okay to assume that anyone that is a bear of descent or a Muslim holds that stance? No. But when it comes to Ilhan Omar, it is well documented that she has some of these stances. And so with that in mind, it is very important to understand that that is the context in which this takes place. <laughs> Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel, but the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.